I'm looking at my series TBR and I am fretting. <laughs> I'm Jade and uh, I don't even know where to begin. I have never done one of these quite in the same way before. A long time ago, I went ahead and just listed off all of the series I was reading. I had a lot of physical copies back then and so I just like pulled all of the books off my shelf, looked at them and was like, yeah, I'm reading all of these. It's grown overwhelming and I have seen lots of people like paring down their TBRs, trying to kind of like manage things a little bit better and series is a weak point for me. I I will start a whole bunch of series and I just will want them to be standalones and then they're not. I don't know what to do with all of these. I have too many series so I'm going to be culling a lot of the series. I've written down every series off of my Goodreads that I've ever read, started, anything like that. And I'm going to be deciding the books that I'm DNFing, the ones I'm on the fence about, the ones that I'd like to continue, and then my highest priorities, the ones I will be continuing like now. There's so many to get through. Like guys, Guys, I color coordinated. I really tried. I will be doing my absolute best to make this manageable and fun for everyone. And by everyone, I mean you, not me, because like, this is just a lot. Okay, so I am currently in the middle of about 65 series. I will be DNFing many of those. And I have now decided the ones that I am definitely DNFing. You cannot pay me. Well, actually, if you wanna pay me, I have Venmo down there. I'll, I'll read the series if you pay me. You could probably not pay me enough <laughs> to read the these series. They are DNF'd. They're done. For this video, I will be sticking the first book in the series up here, and it will also list the author's name. There's just too many books to go through. I want to just roll on through this, and then we both kind of know what books we're talking about. I won't be talking about them in depth here. I just want to get on the same page. <laughs> so, for books that I am DNFing, first is Wicked Saints. I will be DNFing Wicked Saints. I thought the first one was okay. It was mostly just hyped. There's so many books I want to continue. I will be DNFing Wicked Saints. I'm so sorry. It's really just a gorgeous cover. The next book, Opposite Reaction. I'm DNFing the Beartown series. Beartown was a five-star book for me. I love Beartown. I thought it was so heart-wrenching and such a beautiful book. It was well-written. It hit on a lot of topics that I really care about, and it was set in a town that was similar to a town that I grew up in. I felt a lot for Beartown, and I thought it was a standalone. Apparently, it's not, so I'm DNFing Beartown because it was a perfect standalone for me. I felt like it had a concise and strong ending and I just I want to leave it there. You're more than welcome to be upset with me. Do so kindly because I really do love that book. I just I don't want to continue the series. If it did need to happen for you I'm so happy for you but I don't think it needs to happen for me so I'm leaving it there while it's still perfect and preserved. I read the first book Dragon Pearl in the middle grade series A Thousand Worlds and I thought it was just okay. I thought it was really cute and peppy. I would definitely recommend it to several middle graders. I just it didn't click for me personally. Then we have one in future. I don't remember all of the reasons I hated this book, but I DNF'd the second book and I hated the first. I'm not going to continue this series. I don't need to hate read a series. There's lots of Arthurian legend books that I enjoy. I thought it was a really fantastic idea that needed a lot better execution and time in order to be what it wanted to be, which I think what it wanted to be was what Gideon the Ninth ended up being for me. So I'm just going to leave it there so I don't piss people off by just hating on a series that I know I'm not going to continue to enjoy. Then, Serpent and Dove. Hated Serpent and Dove. There is a video on the internet somewhere of all the reasons why. I don't have the reasons anymore. I just have the feelings. And they're dark. And they're powerful. And they're brooding. And I don't want them anymore. So I'm not going to continue the Serpent and Dove series. It's next. Then we have Merciful Crow. I have a another video of where I break down the Merciful Crow and try and explain it to people because I needed it explained to me. I didn't understand what I was really reading and not in a fun way. It was more of like, why is this happening to me and why are these things happening to them and what are these people talking about kind of way. People love this duology. It's not for me, but it is for a lot of other people and I'm really happy for them. I'm done. But if you are going to pick up the book and you would like a breakdown of some of the things that I was confused at, I don't know if that video holds up very well, but you're welcome to try it. <laughs> Where was I? Oh yeah, I'm DNFing the Merciful Crow. Next, Girls of 
Paper and Fire. I loved the first book, Girls of Paper and Fire. I think I fall into a large swath of people who really enjoyed the first book in this series and then felt a little confused or kind of like eh about the second one and just didn't want to continue or continued and felt a lackluster sense of accomplishment. And that's just like not, I can't when there's so many books I want to get to and I barely remember the characters because I was so detached to them by the end of the second book that I just, there would be no point. Ooh, this is so negative. I, I mean, rarely this negative, but I'm, I'm just getting it all out there. I have a lot of feelings, I guess. Oh, speaking of feelings, I just put up my stats video and I mentioned this is one of my most disappointing books. In fact, it was my most disappointing book in that I disliked it and it was disappointing. Um, and that is Sleeping Giants. This is a series I will not be completing. I talk about it more in my stats video. I don't need to wreck this book twice. I was really upset and now I'm over it. I gave it two stars. There's no reason to continue. Oh, I have a few more. Okay. I'm so sorry, guys. Unseen World, which is the first Unkindness of Magicians. Am I making that up? Is that real? But it was announced that it was going to be a series a while back. I feel like I don't want to reread the book. It was just okay for me. I think I gave it a 3.5, maybe a four star. It's not singing to me. It's not calling to me. I wasn't like celebrating that it was becoming a series. I thought it was a fine standalone and I'm just leaving it at that. That way I can still recommend the first book to people and then they can make the decision for themselves. Ah, uh, after that is The Diviners. This is another one where I thought it was an excellent standalone and it wasn't a standalone and from what I understood a lot of people end up DNFing the entire series. <laughs> this is just hearsay and gossip. I'm just like spouting half-truths on the internet. The people I know being not actually a lot of people haven't continued the series and haven't enjoyed it or people who have similar reading taste to me found it to be lackluster and I found the first book to be beautifully atmospheric, really well written, had a couple problematic points for me as far as racial representation and I just, it just didn't vibe with me. It wasn't a complete miss, but it definitely wasn't a hit and I just don't want to continue it, so check. This one is a surprise for me and I sat down and really thought about this. I've read most V.E. Schwab books, I think, maybe. That feels like a strong statement, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. I've accidentally, I think, read most of V.E. Schwab's work. I really enjoy most of it, like a lot, but I, after reading the villain's duology and hating the second book, I just felt meh and okay about the first in Monsters of Verity, the Savage Song duology. I just don't want to read that. I don't want to read a V.E. Schwab book where the first one was meh for me because I feel like that will make the second one all the more meh. If I'm wrong on that, let me know, but as of right now, you couldn't pay me. Again, you could pay me, but unless you're actually gonna pay me, I'm not doing it. And then finally, oh no, second finally. No, not even close to finally. I have a lot of these. <laughs> then we have The Aurora Cycle. This is by, I think, Jay Kristoff. No, am I lying? Is that true? It's up here. <laughs> I read the first one and enjoyed it and I don't remember anything about it and it didn't stick with me and like that's ultimately what that is. Let's move on. Gilded Wolves was meh for me. I want to read more of this author's work because there was a lot of really cool tension moments and I actually remember Gilded Wolves fairly well despite how long ago I read it and my lackluster enjoyment of it. I'm really interested in picking up this author's other work. I don't think it would be good for me and this author's relationship if I tried to finish the Gilded Wolves series. So I'm not doing that. Next is The Devouring. The Devouring was perfectly fine. I actually really enjoyed it when I read it. The author conducted themselves in a way that just, it, it just left a bad taste in my mouth. So when I went back to try and complete the second book, I just was distracted by it. Sometimes I'm able to separate the artist from the work and then sometimes I can't. That was a moment where I found out I can't. So I'm not going to. After that, the final one is An Ember in the Ashes. I just feel like my time has passed. I read the first book and the second book. And the third book, I don't think I would be confident enough going into the third book. Don't want to read the first two again. I feel like this was a fantastic series and that I'm going to be missing out, but I don't feel FOMO, so I'm just kind of rolling with it. This is the one that edges into On the Fence, but I feel right now pretty sure about it. Like I'm 98% sure you could pay me. That actually rolls us into the On the Fence books, which are books where I am softy enoughing them. I'm not going to gravitate towards them or try, but I could be compelled by enough recommendations or the right words, the right phrases, just like something to edge me back into the, okay, this is on my TBR list. For soft DNFs, the maybe never agains. We have The Alchemist's Journey. This is Middle Game by Sean and McGuire. I love Sean McGuire's work. I really enjoy them as a writer. I liked Middle Game, but I was severely triggered. I had this recommended to me as a book I would love with someone who really knew my triggers like intimately and had had lots of conversations with me 
about them, but because it was their favorite book, they actually omitted telling me about the trigger that came up in it, and it was just a lot for me. And then the second one kind of had like meh reviews when it first came out. I didn't hear a lot about it, so it's currently a soft DNF, but I could be persuaded. I have a really strong reaction to different forms of suicide and uh, suicide idolation and just the entire area having to do with suicide I am really careful with, and this hit just a lot of pinpoints for me, and uh, I say definitely look up the content warnings because like this book was really great. It was also very heavy. Heavier than was anticipated for me, but I could be persuaded. I don't know. Is it good? The cover's cool. Next is, I don't know why this is a soft DNF. I have such a toxic relationship with this book. Uh, Chaos of Roots, which is Priory of the Orange Tree. If you are part of the, like, the Draconathon community, which is where I read a lot of dragon books with my friend Soleil on the internet, and then we all talk and gather and just nerd out, like severely nerd out over dragons, you know that I shouldn't be soft DNFing Priory of the Orange Tree. I should be hard DNFing it. But I saw the new book come out. It just, it pulled me back in. <laughs> the same exact feelings, the FOMO I had for Priory the first time came right back up. And I did not think Priory was all that great. I thought it was not worth the hype. I thought it was too long. I thought it had a really weird incestual twist. I thought there were so many things that I didn't like about this book. And I'm soft DNFing it because I feel like I could be persuaded on the second book because it is a prequel. I did like the dragons and the world building and I just, it, it needed to be more gay. I don't know. Convince me. Uh, next is Camelot Rising. The first one is Quinevere's Deception and I thought it was a perfectly okay Arthurian legend. I thought it had a cool twist and good take on it. I think the covers are gorgeous and that was all I really felt about it. So I'm like, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll continue it. I really am a sucker for Arthurian legend, but for right now, I'm just gonna not. It's on the fence of a not. Then we have Folk of the Air series. This is the, he's wicked, the prince, prince wicked, wicked, wicked prince, king, king of the wicked, queen of the damned. No, that's, that's rice. I'm gonna look it up. What is this called? The Cruel Prince. <laughs> I read The Cruel Prince and I was just, it was just okay for me. It wasn't even fun. I didn't even like fun read this. Like I read a lot of Sarah J Mass books for fun and then they have hidden depths, except for the last one, that one was trashy, but I can read a book that is a little bit more, I, I don't wanna offend people here. And I don't wanna offend Holly Black who will never watch this video, but like I just, what I was sold was not what I personally got. And I think I just need to let it go because if I wasn't taken in by the cruel prince is like the wicked king or the queen of nothing, is it a big uptick? Like does the writing get just so much better? Let me know, I can be persuaded. This next one, Six Crimson Cranes. This was one of my five star reads. I adored it, loved it. I am soft DNFing it because I tried to read its sequel, The Dragon's Promise. Ooh, that beginning, it was not good. You know, like obviously it's subjective. I, I try not to say things in absolutes, but like I really did not like the first act of that book to the point of like, I did set it down. I did soft DNF in. It was one of my most anticipated reads. I personally had heart feelings for this book where I was like, oh, I can't wait to read Dragon's Promise. That was not the case for me after I had started reading Dragon's Promise. So right now I'm soft DNFing it. Then finally, The Memoirs of Lady Trent. Read this again for Draconathon, dragon nerd books. It was a really nerdy dragon book and I actually really enjoyed it. And it is a full series. It just seems like such an undertaking. And I don't know if like I felt that kind of spark with it because there's so many books and I just, I don't know if it's worth it. So if you have read this series, the Memoir of Lady Trent series, and you think it's worth it, let me know because I would happily be persuaded. Okay, that's enough negativity. Let's move on to books that I'm caught up with. So these are the books that I am caught up with, but there will be continuations of the series, so they aren't complete in the same way. Lord of the Rings is complete. We're not getting more of those, right? That's a complete series. These ones have the potential to grow or are currently growing and I know that they will have new books out. These are ones that I'm waiting for. That's the Nevermore series, of course, Wayward Children series, God Killer, which I can hold up because I have physically and was a recent favorite of mine. I talk about it in my stats video. Babel, this is just a, a hope, a wish, a dream. It's very, very possible that Babel is a standalone. I have not wrapped my mind around that. I think it has the potential to continue. I have no proof whatsoever that this is a series. I'm just personally waiting for the sequel. I don't know that there is one. 
Crescent City series. I didn't really like the second one, but there's just something about those books. It was messy like spaghetti, and spaghetti is delicious. Then we have Nameless Republic. That's the Son of the Storm. It was a five-star prediction that I gave a 3.5, but I totally want to see if my mind can be changed about the series. This is a new author to me. I want to give them a chance. I'll be reading their second book to solidify how I feel about the series. Court of Thorns and Roses. I think that these are still coming out. They feel like they're still coming out. There's still like a lot to do, so yeah, I will continue to read those. The Burning, that is the Rage of Dragons series. It's like one of my all-time favorite series. It's an of course for me. And then Teen Killers Club. This is a fun little series that I've really just enjoyed. I don't talk about it very often on my channel, which is a shame and kind of a crime. Kids go to summer camp and learn how to assassinate and kill people because they're deemed as deviant. And then there's a whole bunch of discussions on like deviance, sociopathic behavior, really like deep diving into what that is and that it's a neurological thing, just how people weaponize it. And it's really good. It's really fun. And it comes off as just like charming and kind of a fast paced, fun, easy read. But I actually think that it has a lot of depth to it and I enjoy the author's writing. Then we have Six of Crows. I recently found out that this is going to be a trilogy instead of a duology, which I'm really excited for. I really enjoyed the duology. I kind of like it as a duology, but I'm like trying to think of it as like a spinoff. And then I'm actually caught up with the legacy of Orisha. I thought I wasn't, but I am. I thought the third book had come out already. Children of Blood and Bone was my introduction into book two. This book was becoming really popular as I started book two. I have an emotional attachment to this story. I still remember them. It will be a reread when the third book book does finally come out. So there's that. This is my new After the Culling series TBR. This series that I plan on continuing that I have not finished. This is going to be in priority of like highest to lowest priority. The ones that I'm most excited for really want to get to all the way down to books that I just want to complete, want to continue. They'll happen eventually. The Mistborn series. I have four books left to read in the Mistborn series because there is like a phase two of Mistborn. I finished two books in the Mistborn series. I'm halfway through the third book and then I have like the second phase of the Mistborn series, which is deflating because that just seems so long. <laughs> then Stormlight Archive series, really enjoyed this series, left it for a little bit to finish and complete Mistborn and then plan on coming back to it. But I think once I complete the trilogy of Mistborn, I want to come back to Stormlight Archive because I only have two more books in the Stormlight Archive and then I'm caught up on that. Please help me. <laughs> then we have Chronicles of the Bitch Queen. What a name, phenomenal book. I read two out of the three in the trilogy and I would love to read the third one. Locked Tomb. The first book is Gideon the Ninth. I already have ordered the second book, Harrow the Ninth, and Nona the Ninth is on my radar, unless Harrow just really does a 180 spin. I will be completing this series this year. And that's not a goal, that's just like a truth. Crown of Feathers. I read the first in the Crown of Feathers and started the second book, and then I was in the middle of moving and I was trying to decide which books to take with me. I have the entire Owl Crate editions, and I loved the first one, but I need to reread it. So I have all three of these books to read, but one is a reread. I read and loved Ray Bearer so much. It was such a fantastic book. I might have a video, like a singular review of it. Maybe. It might have just made like a favorite books list. I just absolutely adored it. I actually would love to pick up the second book, Redemptor, in June because I'm reading queer books in June and this has so much beautiful queer representation. So that is two books, but one is a reread and I hope that it's happening very, very soon. Then Broken Earth. I'm not rereading the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy because that entire story and all of the trauma that happened along with it is engraved in my mind. So I have two books to read in that series. Alex Stern, this is Ninth House, which I will be rereading in order to read Hellbent. I felt like I didn't take Ninth House in. It was at a really weird point in my life. It had very upsetting images, but there was also a side story that I just wasn't paying enough attention to. So I want to give Ninth House another try and then read Hellbent. So that is a series that I am very interested in continuing and in that case also rereading. Then we have Return to the Earth Mother. That is the series title for the first book, Daughter of Henri. Both covers are gorgeous and I absolutely loved the first book. I just didn't get around to the second one, but I feel like it's been too long since I read Daughters of Henri, so I will be rereading that. So two books, one being a reread. I only have one book left in the Saga series. This is graphic novels, which I normally wouldn't put in something like this because like graphic novels are just, they're a different ball game. I only have one left in the Saga series, so I will continue that so I don't get too far behind. The last book that I read in the Saga series really messed me up. I don't know if I will continue, but I want to read this most recent installment.
moment soon so that I can decide if this series is still for me after what I read in the book previous. That was the worst. <laughs> I've given most of them four to five stars, but like, oh God. Anyway, if you know, you know. Then we have The Poppy War. Yes, I want to continue The Poppy War. I won't be rereading the first book, but I'd like to read the next two. This was actually originally a soft DNF for me, but RF Kuang really turned it around for me as far as reading Babel, and I want to give more of her work a try. I'd like to read her most recent book that just came out. I think it's called Yellow Face, but I also want to go back to this series and give it another shot because it is a lot of people's favorites, and while I wasn't sure I wanted to continue it because it was just a freaking lot, so was Babel, and I ended up really happy with the fact that I had finished Babel. Then I have one more book to read in the Beautiful series. I absolutely adored Beautiful and The Damned and The Righteous, and I just have one more, and then I'm done with that series, but I should get to that sooner rather than later, or I think I will forget all of the characters and I'll have to reread the entire series, which is not a bad thing, but as far as my future plans, for what I'm doing with my TBR and series, it does not lend to the cause to have to reread all of them. Bridge Kingdom. I plan on continuing Bridge Kingdom. I thought I was going to soft DNF this one. I just have heard really good things about the series as a whole and I really enjoyed it. And I can see myself going back to the series specifically because it's kind of like soft fantasy romance. Sometimes that's just what you need. What is the Blood Sworn Saga? Well, I have it listed as a reread, so that makes sense because I don't know what it is by name. Blood Sworn. Oh, Goodreads. You do. Doof. Come on. Oh! Oh, the Bloodsworn Saga. Okay, I'm pretty sure that this is a phenomenal book that I did not appreciate properly. I read The Shadow of the Gods and I think I gave it a 3.5 and pissed off the world. I remember the ending really, really well. I just, I think I read it too fast. I was reading it for Draconathon and I read it really fast when I was reading lots of dragon books and like consuming a lot of things. This series, this book does not really lend to that kind of reading experience. So I didn't have a phenomenal experience and that's how that worked out. I'll be giving Shadow of the Gods another try and then eventually maybe reading Hunger of the Gods. It's in my promise jar so I can see it coming up at some point and that's probably when that'll happen. I don't see me picking it up naturally but if it's my promise book then I have to read both in the same month which will just be so much fun. Mirage. I read the first book Mirage and absolutely adored it and then the second book I think came out when I was in the middle of moving to Japan which you know I was kind of busy so I didn't get to the next one but I really really want to read it. I think I should probably reread Mirage though so I'll say two books in that one. Gumio was a buddy read and it was just like had a really positive experience. I don't see me rereading the first book because I remember pretty much all of the plot beats. Daughter of the Moon Goddess. This is lower on my list because I did pick up a Daughter of the Sun Warrior. And, like I wasn't super, uh, what is this? What is this? Intrigued, invested, grabbed. <laughs> I need to eat dinner. We're reaching the end of this video. <laughs> pulled in. I was not pulled in by the second book, despite loving and being enthralled with the first. So that kind of put me off a little bit, but I do eventually want to read Daughter of the Sun Warrior because the first book was so beautiful and phenomenal. And I just, I know I will get to it, even if it ends up having to be a reread. Right now I remember everything, so I'm solid. In the future, it, it might, it might be a reread. This is technically breaking the rules because I have not completed the first book in the series. So uh, I started Black Sun, was really enjoying it and then got caught up in Addie LaRue and ran out of time. Addie LaRue was a library book and Black Sun is one I own. So library books get priority and that's kind of how that works out. I didn't finish Black Sun but I want to finish Black Sun and I'm actually as a rule not starting any new series until I complete series. I am breaking my own rules here immediately after making them but Black Sun is going on this list. I'm just I'm sneaking it in right at the very beginning of this new rule thing that I'm doing. So I have to read Black Black Sun, and Fevered Star. So on my TBR now is a total of 33 books, six of which are rereads. I feel really good about that. That is manageable. So I will not be starting any new series until I complete some of these. That is my rule I'm creating for myself. That is my goal that I kind of like alluded to in my stats is I want a surplus. I will not be starting new series until I complete a series. And that starts now. So any books I've read previously in my previous quarter does not count towards this. These are the books that are on my TBR. So as soon as I complete a series, then I can pick up a new one. That was really long. I feel like it was long-winded. It was a long time. It was a lot of reading and talking. I'm gonna go eat dinner. Let me know if you prefer series or standalones. I find myself really overwhelmed by series, but I'm always gravitating towards them because I'm such a character-driven reader that I just want more time with the characters. But 
standalones are so much less stress and commitment. What side of the spectrum are you on? Are you a series reader, a standalone reader? Are there any books on my tentative soft DNF list that you think are an absolute mistake? Or my DNF list for that matter. You're more than welcome to your opinions. Whether you tell me or not, I hope you're enjoying The Sun or More Stars wherever you are. And until next time, bye! I need, I need food.